If you're a movie fan or a comic book fan or really just if you've been alive uh, in the last 20 years or so, then you're probably familiar with the Marvel movies and the, the Avengers associated movies and and particularly maybe you've you've seen uh infinity war and endgame and, and you're familiar with the idea of what's going on and not don't worry we're not going to nerd out too much in these specific movies but i bring this up only because uh, these these movies in particular that that or in the events that led up to these movies center around the the idea of what are called the infinity stones right and if you're not familiar again we're not going to go too deep into this but they're basically this this evil guy is trying to collect these six things that give him absolute power these six stones that give him absolute power but individually they're they're pretty cool they do a lot of really neat stuff individually but they really hold significant power their their primary power when they're all brought together into what he puts into this to this uh to this uh, this glove basically this gauntlet right and uh so th that's when they get their real true powers when they're they're collected together and they're all used together so individually they're all really quite significant but collectively they hold this just incredible power the power to end the world as it is right? so uh, i want to <clears throat> kind of think about that as we as we talk a little bit about the different elements that are involved in um writing for uh, and, and strategic writing specifically for public relations right that these are all things that are interconnected we're going to talk about the different specific elements of strategic communication but they're so much stronger when they are bound together when they're interconnected when they are used together having any one of these skills would be significant for somebody working in public relations but when you can really group them all together then you can wield it sort of as a superpower and when you can learn to use them all uh, sort of as one and weave them all together so with that, we're going to talk a little bit today about the elements of strategic communication, specifically as they relate to public uh, relations, right? So strategic communication, strategic writing, specifically as it relates to public relations. So let's first define strategic communication a little bit. We're going to take a look at a couple of different definitions here. And the first is very simply this, the purposeful use of communication by an organization to fulfill its mission. Simple enough, right? So the purposeful, that's the key word, the purposeful use of communication by an organization then to fulfill its mission, not just to do anything at all, but to fulfill the mission of that organization. So they're intentional, they're purposeful, and they're using it to achieve their purpose, to achieve their goal. Right? Uh, we could also uh, look at it as uh, saying it's, the, it's communicating the best message through the correct channels to the right people at the right time and using feedback from this process to stay focused on company goals. So sort of saying the right thing, just, just saying a little different, a little, little more catchy there, um, and, and, but, uh, and breaking it down just a little bit more. Um, but essentially that's what we're looking at here, right? The strategic communication at its core is having the right message, adding then the right audience at the right time, using the right tactic or channel. And then of course the overall purpose though is to achieve that goal. To achieve that, it's, 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 you know, kind of meaningless to have this amazing communication if it's not directed towards something, at least as far as strategic communication is concerned, okay? So, really, we're looking for the right message to deliver to the right audience at the right time using the right tactic, all in, you know, the purpose of achieving that specific objective or goal or goal strategies, or, um, objectives, whatever they are. So that's what we're working for. We need to remember that's our purpose in strategic communication. So then what is it that feeds into that? Let's break it down a little bit and look at some of the specific elements or the infinity stones, if you will, of strategic communication here. Uh, the first is very simply purpose. Again, I've mentioned that a couple times now. Strategic communication has a purpose. There is a reason that we are communicating this. There's, there's ultimately something that we are trying to achieve with this. And we have to very clearly identify that and have it in mind throughout every step of this process that really, um, really informs every other element and informs every, you know, every aspect of strategic communication. What is our purpose? Well, okay. So, well, who's our audience? Well, it depends on what's our purpose first. We need to know our purpose before we can identify what the audience is, what channel should we use to reach them? Well, it depends on what we're trying to do, right? That depends on our purpose. We've got to have that compass. We've got to, you know, have that true north, that constant north for us, if you will, and, and, and identify our purpose and really have that specific purpose in mind as we move into each of these other things. So purpose is incredibly important when it comes to strategic communication, not just to have an end goal in mind, 
but then to use that to inform every other decision that we make as far as how we're communicating this message and who we're communicating it to and so forth. So first, we've got to start with purpose and we've got to identify that purpose very clearly. We also need then to consider the channel. Uh, and the channel is just another way of saying, how are we communicating this? Through what means are we communicating this? Sometimes we call it the medium and the plural of medium is just media, right? So what, what medium, what channel are we going to use to communicate this information? Uh, and really it depends on all of these are kind of interconnected, but who are we trying to reach and what's the best way to reach that audience? And should we be thinking about, you know, a written message or would a, a video message be more compelling? Uh, is an asynchronous message okay? Meaning it doesn't necessarily have to be specifically timed for this moment, or is it, is it really more connected to a specific time? And, and do we need to really time it out that way and, and communicate in a channel that will allow us to do that? So we need to consider all of these things and choose the appropriate channel. If we were trying to reach, you know, a group of senior citizens, you know, 80 plus year olds that live in a specific community in Florida, well, then maybe, you know, Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it may not be our best option there because those folks may not be on Twitter or some other technology. We may need to find a way that, that we can communicate to that specific audience. Um, and so we need to identify the channel that's going to best allow us to, to reach that audience and be very intentional about that and not, you know, waste a lot of time on these other channels if it's not going to help us achieve our purpose. Again, it comes back to purpose. But what channel is going to best allow us to achieve our goal? We need to identify that channel or channels, those channels, plural, uh, or the medium or media that will allow us to do that and then pursue that in, in as best a way as possible. We also need to consider the timing. Okay. And timing doesn't just refer to like the time of day and time or time of week or whatever, but it's timing in terms of, is this the right time for us to, uh, to try and achieve this goal and to try and achieve this, you know, to try and reach this audience and send this message, regardless of the channel or the audience or whatever, you know, you see uh, every once in a while when there's something significant in the news happen that, that, uh, that t television networks and things will, will adjust maybe the release of a TV show or something. I, I, I can recall several occasions now when there have been episodes of a TV show that have had to do with like a, a school shooting or some other type of potentially some type of violence. And then there's a school shooting in real life or something like that in real life. And networks will totally just pull that episode and scrap it because the timing isn't right. It's not going to be received in the right way. And it's not going to send the right message at that time. We need to think about that as well as strategic communicators. Is this the right time or is this, you know, an insensitive time for us to try and release this? If we're trying to, um, you know, make headway for a company that sells beer or sells alcohol of some sort, you know, but there's been a significant accident involving a drunk driver, even though, you know, that's a person who was irresponsible with the way that they consumed alcohol and then, you know, got behind the wheel and has nothing to do with us specifically or whatever, maybe not even our product or whatever, but still, is it going to be received in the right way at that time? We need to think about those things. We need to think about the timing of this message. And then, yes, sometimes we do need to think about Okay, so our audience, an early morning audience or a late night audience or are they, you know, so when do we need to time this? And if it's, you know, sometimes you'll hear uh, bad news from organizations come out like on a Friday afternoon or Friday evening or something like that because they feel like it'll get buried over the weekend. And then by Monday, they'll be on to something else. And so they, they kind of what they call take out the trash right on Friday afternoons because they think people will pay less attention to it. And it won't be such a big deal if they you know slip this bad news in at that time. So. Whatever it is, we need to think about the timing again, that's going to best help us achieve our goal and, and best feed into our purpose, identify what that purpose is, and then consider what timing is going to uh, most closely allow us to uh, achieve that purpose. So timing ought to be on our mind. I've mentioned this a couple of times now too, but audience should always be at the forefront of our mind. Who are we trying to reach with this? And there should be a specific audience. We, we're not trying to talk to everybody, right? There's an old maxim in communication and public speaking specifically, but in communication in general and, and any type of field that has to do with communication, there's this old maxim that says, when you speak to everyone, you speak to no one. In other words, when you try and reach everyone, then the odds are that you're not going to be effective in reaching much of anyone. 
right? Uh, because we need to identify what's going to be specifically um, compelling and relatable to this particular audience. So we've got to engage in some audience analysis, right? We've got to identify who within the larger group of people that make up our entire society uh, and the potential pool of people who may hear this, who specifically are we trying to reach? Right? What is our target audience here? And that will help us then. Th this will both um, evolve from our purpose, going all the way back to purpose. And when we identify our purpose, we'll be able to then say, okay, who is who are we trying to reach with this? Who are, who do we most want to take action on this, or or most want to get on our side with this? And then we can identify that audience and then be even more specific in thinking about channel and timing and all of these other things. When we think about, okay, what's the best way to reach this specific group of people? So audience is a critical element, critical factor in strategic communication that ought to be at the forefront of our mind at all time. When we make every decision. We ought to be thinking, okay, how is this going to be received by our audience? How is this going to help us uh, reach our audience and ultimately achieve our purpose with that audience. We'd, we'd be irresponsible if we didn't also consider impact in a variety of ways here. Okay. So we're going to think about impact in a couple of different ways. Um, first of all, impact in terms of um, certainly is our, is our message and, and, and all of these other elements, are they going to be as impactful as we would like them to and have the desired effect and desired, <clears throat> excuse me, outcome that we would like them to. So where are we making intentional, purposeful choices that help us achieve our goal, our objectives, our purpose? Um, and and are, we, are we trying to do everything we can in order to achieve that positive impact toward that purpose and toward those goals, right? So we want that impact um, with the audience and through the channel, and through the timing and all of that to ultimately lead to successfully achieving those goals. Right. So we need to be thinking about our, the intentional impact, a desired impact that we're looking for there and, and our decisions that we're making, uh, helping us achieve that. But we also need to be aware of maybe the less desired impact. You know, we know that every choice that we make has the potential for both positive and negative consequences. And it's hard to make a decision that doesn't involve at least some of each of those. Right. And so we're, we're trying to make the choices that, that serve the greatest good, hopefully, and have the most positive impact and help us achieve that purpose while at the same time minimizing at least those negative consequences, or at least trying to foresee, if possible, some of those, what we would see as unforeseen uh, consequences or, or unforeseen impact as much as possible. We want to kind of see the unforeseeable as much as we can. Uh, and we're starting to do this in different ways. Over time, this will happen. Now we're in an age where we're thinking about, okay, what is, for example, the the carbon footprint or the carbon impact of these just these choices that we're making uh, and how will this impact the environment? Uh, how will this impact impact um, people who are maybe in some ways disadvantaged or not as privileged? Right? When we do this, how is this going to impact? You know, we community leaders uh, hopefully are thinking about that. If we tear down this building to build a new, you know, high rise or build a new Walmart or whatever, how is this going to impact the people that live in that area? What potential negative impacts could this have? And then weigh that out. Does do the positives outweigh the negatives here? And are there some ways that we can minimize those negative impacts or whatever? But we ought to think about impact in a, in a holistic way is we're, because communication is very powerful, right? Not to keep going back to the superhero well, but uh, as, as Uncle Ben from Spider-Man reminded us, with great power comes great responsibility, right? And communication is ultimately extremely powerful. It's an extremely powerful tool. And we're trying to wield it as effectively as possible, which just increases and enhances the power of communication, right? So we also have to recognize, though, that it comes with that responsibility. We're responsible for the impact that we have, both positive and negative. So we ought to do what we can to maximize the positive impact while at the same time minimizing the negative impact as much as possible in any way that we can. So we think about all of these things, these primary elements of strategic communication. And are there other things? Absolutely, that we should think about. But these are what I would consider the, the critical, the most fundamental elements of strategic communication that ought to be on our mind. Everything derives from purpose, but we ought to also think about the channel, the timing, the audience, the impact as we move through these decisions so that we can then best achieve that purpose, right? So again, these elements really are kind of our own infinity stones. All of them on their own are quite powerful, but when we put them together, we can really make an impact 
through the strategic communication um, and, and specifically uh, as we use it in the field of public relations, right? So we need to think about all of these things and how we can pull them all together to have the greatest impact possible. If you have questions about any of these elements or about strategic communication, specifically as it relates to public relations, uh, and as we lead into this series on, on writing and, and production for public relations in particular, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. In the meantime, I hope that uh, this has been helpful for you and helpful in understanding and laying that foundation of, okay, what are these elements of strategic communication and what can we do to wield them collectively to create as powerful a communication in public relations as we possibly can.